Y'all, my heart is still on fire after the conversation with Camille Goldston Bennett of Project Say Something. I need for you to tune in. I'm going to play the video for you of our discussion that we had live on Facebook. Forget all the technical difficulties that went on. Forget the fact that my head is chopped off in all of the video. What I really need for you to tune into is the message. Not only does she bring her own life experience, but she also brings a wealth of knowledge that you can also find on her foundation's page, which is projectsaysomething.org. Be sure to check it out. Share those resources with friends, family, and other people in your circle so they understand why this fight is so vitally important and our lives are literally depending on it. So take some time to watch the video right now. Camille Goldston Bennett, my fierce warrior. Sister, I love you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I'll be talking to you soon. I want to introduce my very special guest. Um, my special guest is a wife, mother to two black sons and an activist in Florence, Alabama. She founded the Project Say Something in 2014 and continues to serve as its director. Her work focuses on healing, nonviolent communication, and action against racism and poverty. And she has also been the pastor and chief minister of Living Spirit Church, which centers on spiritual oneness since 2012. Um, she is also the executive director of Focus Scope Enrichment Center, Living Spirits Child Enrichment Center, and Compass After School and Vacation Program for Children. All of these programs focus on holistic child development and diversity. And I will only end her introduction by saying that she is a Stillman College graduate and um, I think Delta Sigma member, no? Yes, Delta Sigma chapter, that's your chapter, member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. <laughs> I am so glad that you are here finally. I have been one of your boys. Um, I've been obsessing over you and the work that you are doing in Alabama and to hear your voice there just reverberate throughout. Oh God, thank you so much. Camille, please offer some insight to us about, first of all, what it is you do in our community and what should be our next steps. Um, so what I do for is eradicate anti-black racism. That's the short of it. Um, we do it by connecting historical narratives to the present. So everything that's happening to us as black people right now has a historical connection. It's happened before. And you can always link it to the past. Um, we also focus on, of course, black empowerment. And then there's just the whole gamut of racial justice so that's the short of it but there are so many everyday uh things that are embedded into the structure of this country that we deal with all day every day that sometimes we don't even know how to identify um mm -hmm. i think it starts with understanding how racism really plays out and that takes research and study and then it's, it's every single time you see it creep in, dismantling it, like crushing it. And that, that's, that's as simple as in a workplace, somebody says like a microaggression. Some black people don't even know what a microaggression is, but you know what a microaggression is because you feel it. You're pretty to be black. Uh, that's one. Right. Um, just, just anything. I didn't know you lived in such a nice house. Those are like the basis. Crush it. Nope. You just said a microaggression. And so a lot of times when you crush it, you crush it in a very technical way because there are all these terms, white fragility, white saviorism. Yes, somebody who's like, oh, I want to, you know, um, I do mission work in Haiti and I take pictures and put it on my Facebook, white saviorism. Hey, white sister, that's white saviorism. We don't need that. You know, you, you, you call it what it is. Um, that's one way. And then the other way that I found helpful 
activism is a lot of times like I thought I had to write a whole book or be some like black studies PhD, but it really started with what do I want to do? And then just doing it. If I want to protest, protest. If you, whatever it is you see, you feel like you need to do, do it. Um, and I feel like there's support there if you're consistent in your mission in this. If you're wow. serious about this work, the universe is going to support you. Mm. Wow. Um, I, I appreciate your expertise and your knowledge and your work. Like you have been walking the talk um, for such a long time. Um, and even as a black person, I'm like, what do I do next? Um, okay, I'm going to call out racist behaviors in my workplace. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to do that. Um, and having those difficult conversations when it comes up. Um, I, had, I sent you a list of like certain points that I was thinking about. And it was like seven things mm -hmm. um, as far as where we go from here. And I'm going to just share it with the audience. I shared it with you. Um, when it comes to mobilizing our Black community, um, one, registering to vote. That's like an obvious thing. Like you, but, but you got to vote. <laughs> yeah. Like you got you to gotta get out and vote. And in local elections, um, taking the census, finding out where those resources belong in our community. Um, enrolling in HBCUs. Our HBCUs are hurting. And they have been there for us for so many years when we were denied everything. Those HBCUs were there for us. And if you have a child that's getting ready to go to, what about the HBCU? Honey, I, I, I mm, okay, we can talk about that. Buy local and black, mm -hmm. connect with black farmers, start getting some of your food from those folks that are actually growing the food in your community. Challenge racism and inequity in the workplace. Black co-workers also who benefit from racist norms and policies are complicit in their silence. Ooh. Let's just say that. Um, and when we out here protesting and stuff, I love a good old protest, honey, but please put your mask on. We're still in COVID-19 killing us disproportionately. And if you're not protecting yourself, then when you're out there, you can't be prepared for the real fight. What do you add to that? Or how would you adjust my thinking when it comes to that? You've been doing this a long time. I'm, I'm just like, okay, I, I, don't, I, I don't know where to begin. There's so much. I think that that's, that's another thing that people get bogged down with. They like, this is overwhelming. And so they decide they, they want to do something for racial justice. It's like, okay, do I do police, police brutality? Do I do mass incarceration? Do I do this? Do I do that? For me, it's, it's been comforting to say, I don't have to know every area of how okay. racism plays out. So a lot of times I'll focus on like how black women are affected by racism. So I'm, I'm a childcare provider. And in Alabama, like the majority of child care, per, child care centers are black and yep. child care subsidies, the children that receive the child care subsidy, 80% of those children are black and they have some very problematic policies. Um, the training is subpar. I could go on and on and on. So by advocating for child care centers that serve marginalized communities that are predominantly black owned by black women, run by black women. That's one thing. If a mortality mm -hmm. rate and maternal death rate is a fool in Alabama, a whole mess, and especially for black women. So one of the things we did, we uh, encouraged one of our employees to become a doula. So not every mama that comes from our child care center, she's a doula. So she's there to walk with them in the uh, hospital where a lot of us die or our babies die. Um, or we're not treated fairly. So that's, that's one thing. There's so, uh, ally training, like real ally training, like 
hours of, we've created curriculum for that. Um, Ally training that's, that focuses on anti-black racism. And since I'm talking to black folks, you can be black and be anti-black. Let me be clear. <laughs> you can be black and protect your tokenism your to and be a token and pr protect tokenism. So we see that play out a lot. So the black people who, you know, get that job, get that position, but become um, some, some sort of a puppet. I hate for lack of a better word. Um, and we see them do white supremacist things to black people because they're afraid of losing that power. So they're there and you can dismantle that but and that's that's an education thing you know encouraging black folks if you if you're the only black person in the room something is wrong to please take somebody with you because odds are you're not going to get very much done being the only black in the room and then wow. what and the last thing i'll say is study whiteness learn it um, I suggest every black person on this call goes and gets the book White Fragility. It's written by a white woman and it breaks down all of the behaviors and whiteness. So every time you see it, you become proficient at calling it out. And the reason you're calling it out is to teach. Because now that they know they have this issue, they see it when it comes up and it creates opportunities for you really and truly because now they're like, I don't want to do this. She just says I'm doing white dominance, right? I'm practicing white dominance by taking up too much space. Let me move aside and give her this position. Let me move aside and give her this promotion. You know what I mean? So it, it all works to the, 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 the resources part. I think that's, that's the part that people miss sometimes is that it, it goes back to the resources, the, the inequities. Right. The money. Wow. Uh, it's Sugar Pearl Studio Kitchen Live, and my guest is Camille Golson Bennett, um, and her foundation is Project Say Something. ProjectSaySomething.org. You need to go there. You need. There are all sorts of educational resources on that page, and videos um, for you to study. And it's not just for white folks to study. It is there for us as well. Cause there is so much about this movement that we we're only like scratching the surface, mm -hmm. I think. And, and that's why I just appreciate you just being in my life because it's like, now I can be like, Camille, what, if this happened, you know, what does it mean? Like, what do I do in this situation? Um, but I also want to hear about your experience. You're a beautiful, fair-skinned black woman in Alabama. Oh, child, which part? Fighting for racial justice. What? What has? What was it like for you growing up? And now, when people see you, what is it that they see? Do they see trouble coming? They do. They do. Um, <laughs> I'll give you an example. Uh, as we were working, we're, we're coming to like the ending stages of taking down the monument. And there's a, a county commissioner who's actually a police officer. And he said that he felt afraid of me. I'm a 135 pound woman. You got a whole gun, pepper spray, spray, you a cop and you are afraid of me. So a lot of that is like, they fear boldness they fear that you're not afraid if that makes any sense um growing up i went the high school we went to was extremely racist um i started finding my voice there i remember like always trying to fight about something <laughs> but it was so racist like all the black students we were all strong but most of them were like can we just get through this like shut up <laughs> like everything ain't a protest we trying to graduate and move on. <laughs> so that was always part of who I was. I think it, I think I, you know, I say woke. I think I went back to sleep for a while, get, being married, having small children. I didn't have time to deal. And then once I awakened, this was around Ferguson, 
around 2013, something like that, I start, I experienced the awakening. And then it was like, the mission was clear. Um, you mentioned colorism. Is that a barrier? Yes. Um, sometimes if you're a lighter skinned sister, or if you present um, maybe biracial in some ways or whatever that could be, sisters be like, oh, really? Yeah, here she comes, you know, that kind of thing. So Sometimes right. you, you may have to navigate that, but really and truly our people are loving, all loving, amazing people. So even, even people who were like, uh, not really, once they see you're working and serious, that all of that falls away. I've spoken in front of the KKK whole hoods in full regalia, like the white hoods had to speak publicly. I've been targeted by white nationalist organizations. I've been, um, gotten hate mail before. Um, one organization got mad and put a whole like Confederate, mo Confederate flag on like billboard up because they were mad. It's something we were challenging. We were actually challenging them, like having parties in plantations. If y'all see this in y'all's community, that's a start. When they start that like plantation wedding, they dress up and all that. It's not okay. See if they, t it's just not okay. They shouldn't be having any parties, things like that. Um, so it's been an experience. I thought at first, I was like, I'll never have a job. I'm going to be broke. But God provided. <laughs> we have preschools. We serve predominantly black community and our white clients love the work we do so that we've been, pr we've been prosperous. Um, but it, in terms of it being challenging socially, yeah, it's extremely challenging, but you get used to it. You're going to get talked about bad. So, wow. <laughs> is somebody talking about you, right? You know, so you just you, right. you learn to live with it. Um, I don't know. It's like I can't get enough of like tapping into your brain right now, especially in the wake of. George Floyd, where it feels like so much of Black America is in mourning. Um, you have two sons. What's the conversation that you and Taurus are having with your boys? It's been a series of conversations um, since they were very small. Right now, my 18-year-old is angry. Whew, he's so mad. So it's helping him work through that. He told me a few days ago he wants to write a public statement, an open letter to all his his teammates that have been like that have been either silent or saying racist things. And I'm like, you do it, but let me edit it, <laughs> to see, you know, because he's he's 18 and and um, I want to want to help him help guide him through that. He told me he wanted to get a T-shirt that said Cro "Crooked Cops" on the front, and then the pictures of. Ahmad and uh, George and Brianna on the back. And I said, you know, son, you may want to wear that to a protest, but you're not going to be able to just rock that shirt. You know what I mean? Like, and my youngest son, he doesn't, like he's woke, but he wants to be a kid. The work that I do oftentimes takes over our family in, in ways so he wants to just keep that separate and just play video games and be happy be a kid he doesn't want to talk about it a lot that kind of thing but he does feel it mm -hmm. and i'm just protective i don't want him to go running anymore just like every other mom every other black mom we are all the same right now in this moment wow um i'm going to that that broke my heart um, to hear that your kids can't go running. Not in my um, neighborhood. Nope. Not, not there. Mm -mm. Not there. If, if anyone listening, anyone in the audience, if, if you have a question for Camille, now would be the time to go ahead and type it in. I'll read it out. For her to answer but please um if you need advice about how to have these conversations with your loved ones or you know white people wherever you are um please put that question in the chat so that um you can get some of this knowledge 
from Camille at this time. Your whole family, when it comes to Project Say Something, is quite instrumental in this work. Your mom, Miss Vicky, <laughs> your husband, like yeah, everybody are. is 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 playing such an integral part in this movement. And I don't know if that was the plan, but the outside looking in, you guys seem to make it work. And I mean, you kind of alluded to it before how it can really take over your life, how do you find the balance? How do you right. um, <laughs> yeah. you know, operate in society without looking at white people crazy all the time? Like, how? what do you do? Well, as far as, like, my husband, Taurus, he, I mean, Taurus is very happy being behind the scenes. He would never even do, like, something like this. Like, I asked him about the, because he loves the garden and farming, farmer thing. I was like, why don't you hop on? He was like, nah. So, <laughs> <laughs> but he's, he's so, he's such a constant source of strength. He just holds me down. He doesn't hold me back. If I'm, if it's something too crazy, you know, sometimes you get a little bit too passionate, about to jump out there bad. He calls me out. Or calls me in, he'd be like, no, it's wrong. And my mom's the same way. You know, they're very, very protective of the work I'm doing and trying to hold space for that. But, and it's, it's challenging sometimes, but I, we're making it fine. Um, what was your other question? So it was about Taurus and then what else? I can't remember. Um, uh, just about the role that each of, you know, your mom and Taurus are playing um, in Project Say Something. Um, Taurus is VP. My mom's on the board um, as well. Mama G is just like the ultimate L. She's just, and she's never scared. That's what I love about her. I mean, her, her baby doing out here, jumping out here <laughs> in the South, but she doesn't, she keeps us spiritually grounded. And then Taurus, again, is just like consistently neutral, peaceful, just grounding and holding me down through the work. Wow. Wow. I've um, been on the page, projectsaysomething.org, everybody. Check it out. Um, and there is such, like, a rainbow of people on the page know. doing the work. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I, when I, at the beginning of the show, I was talking about this conversation I had with a colleague, um, the really real conversation with another white woman. Um, and I'm just going to say this because I'm probably not the only one, but um, all my life, all of my life, I've always been very distrustful Um not just of white people, but of white women hmm. in particular. Hmm. So to have that conversation with a white woman, it was like, oh God, here I go. I'm gonna let my guard down again. And then she's gonna show me who she really is. Um, but I knew it was necessary to once again, put myself out there. How do we, <laughs> especially as black women or black men, how do we deal with this? distrust that just lives within us um you seem to do it beautifully you acknowledge it though you acknowledge it it is real I, i'll tell you a story and i can't believe this is coming up right now but it must be it must it must so right now i'm currently being dragged on facebook by a white woman she met me years ago and um she's I, I, she could tell I was not very trusting. I think we were supposed to have a meeting and she brought other people there. And I'm like, very looking very suspicious because it was supposed to be me and her. She brought three more people. Then like I had the racial justice platform and she trying to talk to me about domestic violence and like reverse racism. It got real weird. And this is before I was as, as a strong will. You know, you, I, I wasn't even as woke as I, as I am now. But she waited until... The monument's about to come down. She done posted a whole story. I met her and, oh, she just looks so distrustful. She asked me straight up. She was like, you don't, you look like you don't trust. You know, you look very uncomfortable. I was like, I'm very uncomfortable with white women. 
oftentimes, so I'm, I'm transparent about how racism plays out in my life. Um, I'm transparent with okay. my white women that are friends that we do work together. I'm like, look, white women. I mean, and Robin D'Angelo, to her credit, she's a white woman. She has a whole chapter on white women. There's a reason. Right. On white women's tears, there's a reason. You know, on white innocence and how it's like, oh my gosh, you know, my purse, my dog, whatever. So all of those things, I think, I think that transparency is key. Um, if you have a white friend and you're feeling some kind of way, a white woman, and you're just like, you know, this is what I've been through. I'm seeing the Karens on TV or whatever. And even this woman, right? The one I'm talking about who's dragging me on Facebook. I was honest. She was like, you look very uncomfortable. I was like, I am. Is it because I'm white? Yes. Yes. I've had some experiences. Almost like she relished She kind of did, but I was honest with her, but she took that and just you know, oh, she doesn't like white people. She's out there. This is craziness. But my point is, um, even if that happens, even if, if it's turned against you, I think that either people want to grow or they don't. And there's no shame in our discomfort. There's no shame in our pain. Um, we have every reason not to trust. And I think it's up to that white person to build that trust. I've had white people in my life that are still like, we going to build this trust. And even, if, even when they make mistakes, we keep, we keep working together. We're like, we're going to build this trust. We're going to do it. We can do it. And they try. And I, you know, I don't have to try, but the, you know, we, we just try to get through the work. Um, yeah. So that, that idea that, you know, you hate white people because you're doing this racial, racial justice work. I mean, it's not really about them. It's about black empowerment. Um, and there are moments where, yes, hate fills your heart. Look at what we just had to look at. But wow. those are moments. That, those are real moments. And, and you said something so important. It ain't that I'm just anti-white, but I'm pro-black. Super pro-black. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, I want my people to win. Yes. Yes. And I'm not willing to share this platform with any other. I mean, I've had people, why aren't you talking about all people of color? I don't listen. I love, it's not about that. We need focus. It's okay to just be, stay right there. You know, it doesn't mean you don't yeah. care about humanity. It just means you have a mission. You know what you need, so. Right. Um, a lot of that is often said with the all lives matter. Do people still say <laughs> that? <You> know, um, <laughs> um, yeah, which, which is a little annoying because people will use that against you to say, oh, what do you mean? You don't care about this? No, now you being stupid. That ain't what I said. That ain't what I meant. But I'm, right now I'm focused on one thing. And that's me and my people. And it's okay. I mean, there. I think if people are compassionate, they understand why we need this laser focus. If if they didn't understand before, they got to understand now. Um, on top of black men and women being hunted, we also have coronavirus disproportionately killing us due to... And it, I always tell people, I, I'm so sick of them. Oh, yeah, because they was in the projects having a party. I mean, come on. It's, it, it points right back to the inequities that have existed since we got here. So um, that's a lot to take in in a few months, right? Yeah, most definitely. Um, as we said earlier, again, um, my guest is Camille Golson Bennett. She is the founder of Project Say Something in Florence, Alabama, doing great work, not just for the citizens of Alabama, but she is here talking to my friends all over, South Carolina, New York, Georgia, you name it. Like, this, this is truly a ministry for you. Yes. Um, what, what do you say to Black folks who don't really see a problem? Like the Candace Owens of this world. I don't know if I could deal with that. That's an, 
Carla. <laughs> That's real talk, honey. She, I want to punch her in the throat every time I see her. I would not be having a conversation, girl. That's, listen, you just got to do the sign of the cross and keep, girl, let her go. She let that go. But for black people who don't see a problem, more than likely it goes back to protecting tokenism. A lot of times that's the case, right? You're either in a position that you feel like you can't challenge the system. And a lot of times, no shade, that's real. We got to eat, we got to survive. And sometimes you're like, I don't have time to look at this because I have a job. That's real. Right. Honoring that. Um, but for Black folks that don't see it, I don't force that conversation. I don't think that's effective. Like I okay. said, it's your sleep and your woke. And when the awakening happens, then I have, there's an opportunity. But if someone's like, there's not a problem, I don't even try to enter into that space. That's not up to me to show them. Because mm -hmm. if you can't, look, if you can't see by now, I mean, come on. Right. That's some internal <laughs> work you need to do, you know. Most definitely. Right, yeah, right. It's it's an internal hatred. Right. Really. Self-hate, right? And that's like, you know, yeah. licensed therapist time, that kind of thing, I think. Yeah. So, Camille, I've been having conversations with my mom and my friends, and this time feels different. It Unfortunately, it took so many pretty much murders of Black people in this country and now it's like, uh oh, the lid is off. Something is happening. What do you attribute this change to? Like, did we all just wake up at the same time? What is causing this right now? Because I feel good about it and I don't want it to stop. I'm going to echo my friend, my dear friend, Jalisa. She's an attorney and she, she was extremely active is extremely active in the black lives matter movement and that's a movie that focuses heavily on police brutality so that's the question because again police brutality is not my expertise in, in the racism right. umbrella but it is jaleesa's so i said jaleesa why is it so different and she said the trigger it was something about the proximity of the deaths them happening one after the other after the other the way the camera zoomed in so we could see it so close this time. You know, normally the video's fuzzy, but we could see it so closely. Yeah, it's kind of green. Yeah, so you could see it. And then him saying again, I can't breathe. Eric Garner, I can't. So we just, yeah. that's when we just triggered. I have watched those videos, but my response has never been like George Floyd. I was shaking all over my body, just shaking. And I couldn't, I couldn't even cry for three or four days. That, that's another level. I'm with you. Something about it is different, but I think it's just the triggering, the way it, it all landed. The pro and then coronavirus. That, I mean, all of it. It's the perfect storm. Mm-hmm. Wow. Um, again, it's Sugar Pro Studio Kitchen Live. My guest is Camille Wilson Bennett. If you have a question, please type it in. Um, Aria Lott says, yeah, that was traumatic. Yeah. Um, this wasn't some, you know, slasher film that, you know, you, you pay a ticket to go see. Like, this happened for real, for real. Like, almost all we, we couldn't shield our kids fast enough away from the horror of that moment. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Yeah. And just watching another, watching my husband watch the video. Like, he wouldn't watch it at first. I was like, no, you got to watch it. He was like, I don't want to. I was like, you got to. And uh, seeing his response made me, I've never seen him that way before. So I knew that this was just different. Mm. I don't need to ask this question, but um, I will. Do you think this is going to be your life's work? And if so, 
how will it look next year, two years from now, 10 years from now? Hmm. I'm really, I'm really not the greatest at strategic planning. I can go a year out and then the rest I leave up to the good Lord. I would say, right. I would say it's no coincidence that we as a team uh, created a, a robust training for anti-black racism that's good for black people and is good for white people. Because like I said, you receive, if you sit through a training for white people, you gonna be lit because you're gonna start noticing all the stuff that's happened your entire life and now you got names and terms you like oh my gosh I can't believe I thought it was just me I mean so it benefits all of us but we we put that training to get together what six months ago and now I'm being inundated with do you have a training do you have a training can you come train here can you come train there so I see the next year being about just getting people trained up on the work and uh, whiteness and how that plays out in everyday right. life. Viva has a question and it is, how do you maintain your stance and wokeness in the midst of the negativity with those who look like you and white folks? So now I gotta fight all of you. I mean, I'm I'm going I'm going through that right now. I have like a someone in the community. She's like a, a leader, black woman, and and black white people usually don't hurt. It don't hurt like that, you know. You just you you learn to. But when it's somebody black, oh man, it just uh, yeah. uh, uh I have a strong support system, y'all, and I'm very disciplined. Meditate, exercise, all of these things very spirit try to stay very spiritually grounded that helps dance around the house go running i do try to do anything i can to stay you know fortified through the work but it's not always like that sometimes i i'm not doing well at all you know and then i have people pouring into me just like everybody else it's the same right it's just a commitment what do you think about yeah, for sure. It is it is a commit commitment. Um, but I think you're built for it. I know you are. I I know you are. And I'm I'm just so glad <laughs> um that you are out there speaking. Um so I'm I'm gonna just name it, claim it. Um <laughs> uh in our workplace. You know, there are a lot of resources coming out. Hey, these are some anti-racist resources that you can bone up on. Um, hey, these are, you know, this is another something, something for you. And, then, uh, and we're a mixed staff, pretty, pretty mixed, but majority black. And I got to say, um, I took issue with that. Because I'm like, okay, you're sending out anti-resources to a predominantly black staff, but I need for you to read it. Who sent you these materials? Am I wrong? No, who sent you this <laughs> stuff? It was somebody, somebody white. Who picked the stuff? I mean, this is somebody black. So the black person, but the white person gave it out to you all. Is that how that went? A black person picked it, but. I mean, again, I just had this happen with a dear friend of mine. She, she, Leash, Alicia, I don't know if you remember, when, this is Wintress Walker's little sister, Leash. Yeah, no yeah, okay, that's Le this is her little sister. She just had this happen where, like, she was in a business setting, and the, the man was like, you know, I found some amazing training for y'all. White man, diversity training. She was like, you know, excuse me, you don't get to pick that. Like, you don't get to pick the training that we are going to get. Um, I agree that black people, I, th I, I say that we do need tra training a, lo a lot of times, but not in the ways that they do. It's just so that we can identify more of what you do. <laughs> mm, <laughs> so we, absolutely. so we don't miss Try anything. To call, it out, to call it out. We need that kind of training. Yeah. We need that kind of training. And, and actually put names that you taught me so much. Like, um, 
some of these names, it was something you talked about in one video about, it started with a P, ended with allyship. Performative oh. allyship, baby. Performative allyship. I need for you to break this down for me because there is still so much, although I'm like angry and pissed off and, you know, want to burn shit down. It's like, I, I want to know what certain things mean. Yeah. So please explain to us what performative allyship is. Okay, I'm going to break it down. You got a friend. You are not even a friend, an acquaintance who been like doing problematic stuff. You know, when something is problematic, just racist, you know, microaggressions, or maybe you've even said, I really don't appreciate that. And they got very fragile and defensive and it was your fault and all this. Fast forward, George Floyd, all on the Facebook, Black Lives Matter, I love black people, 200 likes, I'm crying videos with tears it was here's an here's an example there was this white nurse her video went viral she was talking about coronavirus and how it affects black people uh -huh. and i think she was in new york she was crying oh my gosh the black people help they're just killing them they're killing you but the video she was centered it was all about like her even though she was talking about us you could tell that she was centered in the, and she wouldn't even name the hospital. So I'm like, if you was that much of an ally, you would come up in here with the name of the hospital, the doctors, the nurses, all of that. So that that's performative. Real allyship is someone who has been walking with you all along and post something and it warms the heart. That's real allyship. Um, or someone who didn't post at all, but is there for the work. That's real allyship. Or someone who just starts studying on, you know, Googling, learning. There you go. A asking that's questions. Yeah, that's, that's when it's real. I read this book. Can you help? When you hear, I read this book, I read these books and I have questions that's when you know it's somebody who's ready to do some work. Wow. That makes so much sense for me now. Performance. But if it's like... It's a, it's a performance. I got a black... My best friend is black. And I, if, the, if you see all that, or <laughs> my hair... You know, all of that, like my hairdresser is black, or I don't know, anything like that, I, I, don't, I don't typically... It's, it's a lot deeper. Okay. Wow. Um, Brian Vickerstaff says, how do you help your white friends who just don't understand? I'm a Capricorn, so I'm really patient. But again, my white friends now look so different from my white friends back in the day. So my white friends now are working hard. They working right now as I'm on this. I promise you they are. They're working. Even the ones not on in Project Say Something, they somewhere, they're just very passionate. Um, so if something comes up, I patiently, you know, try to, we just try to work through it together from, yeah. or resources, you know, I hold space for that. That is awesome. Or, or don't see color was added. Or don't see color. I don't see color. Like, how dare you dismiss me as a black woman? <laughs> Oh, your lip, I, your mouth. Yeah, because I, I was yeah, doing that in my head. I just had this happen with a police officer. He was like, "Look, you know, he's one of the decision makers for taking down the monument." Um, mm -hmm. We've been, I've been calling this man for three years, never answered a call. Not until that letter came where we demanded, and he saw, you know, an hour away, they was turning up. Now he called. Right. The first thing he said, let me tell you how I was raised. I was raised not to see color. I said, let me stop you right there. I, I'm, I'm going to need, need you to see color. I need, you, I need you to look at me and understand that this experience is quite different from yours. So, and that's a way of gently, you, it doesn't always have to be, I can't believe it, but just, you know, it's teachable. I'm going to need you to do this. See color. That's a good thing. You know, 
like that. Wow. Project Say Something dot org is the website. Um, when I get paid <laughs> next time, I'm gonna use that check so I can become a member and send a donation, honey, because Camille goes to Bennett out here working rings around me. And I need to learn so much more about um, what it really takes to get this work done. So that, that's why I just, I'm so grateful to you, Camille. Like you were like, I ain't, I ain't got time for that. And, and I'm just, I was like, she is so busy. Yeah, I, mean, I see your videos on Facebook. I'm like, she out here like moving mountains and stuff. She ain't got time for no. No, but sugar let me tell you something, Carla. This is for all viewers. Your show has been a lullaby for me. It usually comes on at a. I'm exhausted. I need peace. Something about you in that food, in that cooking, and then I even get relaxed when you're like, I like to watch you eat the food. And I just get, it, I don't know, it's something about it on the hardest day. And Taurus knows, I'll be like, ooh, Carla, on, leave me alone. And I just watch it and it's relaxing. And I feel just connected to another sister who is who has a, an incredible gift. So I feel the same way about you, which is why as tired as I am about to do a whole protest tomorrow that, Yes. It was a must. I was like, Carla, because this show has has given me life. Like, you don't know that, though. Life. Mm -mm. And I talk <laughs> no. about You better ask Tart. I talk about it to Leash, Tars. I'm like, Car Car and I believe, I'm like, I be praying like she's going to be famous. I know it. <laughs> she, 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 oh she about God. to blow up. <laughs> <laughs> Restaurant or something. Only if I got you on my team, oh, honey, honey, because I let me tell you. Yes. Now, and... For me to just reach out to you like that, like even that was a step to me because we weren't like homegirls no, in college no. or anything. We didn't hang out. No, we didn't. You know, I'm not a I'm not in a sorority, and it was like you took time out for little old me. But look at what you did you for me. Just don't know. Mm. You did a lot for me. Just like I said, your show. When I want to forget everything, I'm like, let me just watch Carla cook. And then I'll be thinking I'm you, so I'm like, I'm finna Carla this, y'all. And then I'm like, go cook. <laughs> <laughs> you, got, you taught me how to make eggs taste amazing. Like, just, just it's been a blessing. Oh, so. you did the butter? Yeah. And then I, yeah. I was pushing it <laughs> so it could be fluffy and stuff. This, I mean, you be putting me on. And I love to cook. So... Yeah. Yeah. So I just, it's been a blessing and just, you put your whole heart in it. So I believe that I'm speaking into existence. I believe that whatever you want to happen with it, I believe it will. If that's Thank what you, you want. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you for spending time. I'm not going to keep you all night. I could pick your brain all night. You know, you can always call <laughs> me, right? That... You got my number. I mean yeah, that. Now I, I got you. So yeah. this is a friendship. I need to check on my sister and just help to fill your cup from time to time. Honey, you um, will. I'm, and that's why. Yeah, I'm so glad to be connected to you now. It just it means everything to me. Same so, here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank your mom. Thank Taurus. Y'all, the website is projectsaysomething.org. Go there, get resources, learn, grow, build, um, and contribute to this cause. But it, it's such a worthy cause. But before I let you go, Camille, I've got one final question. What is your feel-good meal of all time? Oh, gosh. Oh, it just came to me. It just came to me. My mom's eggplant, eggplant parmesan. Yeah. Ooh. Um, that's it. I got Ooh, heartburn I now, so I can't. Eat yeah, some. it's good. But I got heartburn, so, you know, tomato irritates it. But that's my feel-good meal of all time. Got to be. Oh, wow. I love it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Please be careful out there. Pray. I know you will. Pray. Everybody on this, yeah. pray. Pray. All my praying folks, pray. Absolutely. Well, I wish you love and power 
And uh, until next time, because we, this, again, this can't be a one and done. We, we got to keep doing this. And I hope that um, I'll be able to call on you again in the future. You will. We know how to get this thing working. Yeah, we, we got it going on now. now. <laughs> hey, Brian, thank you. Exactly. All right, All right baby. Thank you. you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Today was a good day. And, uh, you know, with days that have been so hard and so full of tears and so full of and oh what are some other books that you recommend viva go to her website um the foundation's website project say something.org if you would like more resources books and documentaries and all of that they are on the website so go there and check it out again um that was Camille, y'all. That was Camille Goldston Bennett. And I'm just so grateful. I'm so grateful. I hope that we can continue this dialogue. Thank you for your questions. Thank you for sitting through this and listening and sitting through all of the technical difficulties at the beginning. I know I do it now, honey. We're going to get a little head piece and a little ear piece. And uh, yeah, yeah, that's what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. So I hope that wherever you are, uh, you don't have to be um, the uh, leader and CEO of a nonprofit fighting these issues. You've got power where you are right now. So doggone it. Use it. There is much work to still be done. And I'll be damned. If I just let the moment die down, I can't just be on here cooking, grinning and eating and not talk about the real stuff that's happening in our lives. So, um, I love you guys for watching my family, my friends, my new friends and family. Thank you so much. And, uh, until next time, remember, I love you. And I hope you love me back.